So then they say, present moment to mind that is the self, because that is the exist. And that produce has not yet ceased. They already exist, not yet ceased. So that's why that is the self. So that's the their thinking, right? This uh, who believe the permanent self. So they 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 think that way. But Shanti Deva no accept that answer. If this were the case, then in the next moment, uh, when it had fresh parachute, it would no longer be the self. With this reasoning, all five aggregates are rejected as being the self. So this present moment mind also actually no exist. So if we go to really such a level moment to mind, then it's no exist. Either like past or future, you don't have really such a level moment to present, you know, it's, it's self. So that has a lot, uh, Nagarjuna has a lot of information about this section. So he said, we cannot really talk, no present talking is already talked or feature. If you go to very subtle level, it's a moment. And then that way, so this morning and no us is different, it cannot be same person because it's changed already. So we are continue is the same, but the actually self or this mo present moment is already changed, cannot be same. Uh, so then Shanti Deva give example, for example, when the tongue of a planting tree is split into parts, there's no essence found at all. So you can investigate, you know, like this way, that this tree take the skins out and they know any essence in there. So like that, so investigating our consciousness or investigating the phenomena, object, so we cannot find any self permanent there. So likewise, when analytically search for with reasoning, a truly existing self cannot be found among the aggregates. So we cannot find any self permanent. So then we say we have R and the self. So that is like delusionally go with uh, this far aggregates. But far aggregates cannot be self. So the self means one permanent entity. Far aggregates means phi. So that's first already the contradict. One and phi is cannot be same. Then phi aggregates is always a compound of phenomena. Self means permanent, independent. So phi aggregates is dependent. That's why phi aggregates cannot be self. Uh, so now is a caution again, there who accept the self, they're going to debate with again. If no self, then they say, how can practice compassion, you know? So we practice compassion is that thing is useless. And also compassion to who? Other sentient beings no exist, they don't have self, they no exist, compassion to who? Right, that thing is no subject, no object, no actions, then it's practice compassion, practice, follow the cause and effect is useless. So that's why they ask this question. Uh, if there were no sentient beings, if no sentient beings, towards whom could compassion be developed? So then how to compassion to who? Who going to develop the compassion? That's a question. The answer is, Shanti Deva giving answer again. Uh, Although sentient beings did not truly exist, uh, he said yes, sentient beings truly means absolute truly no exist. Deceptively one should develop compassion for those imported. So Shanti Deva said relatively you can develop compassion, you know, cultivate compassion for others as sentient beings by the uh, by the confused mind, 
which has pr promised to practice the Bodhisattva way of the life in order to lead them to the goal of liberation. See, delusionally, you can practice compassion, you can cultivate Bodhicitta followed by this way of Bodhisattva, can, you can benefit for others. The reason is like this being's mind is confused. They have delusions. So then during they have, when they have delusion, so during that time, these Bodhisattvas can lead them, you know, can benefit for them. So can practice like compassion, Bodhicitta, way of life in order to lead them to goal of liberation. Uh, so then question again. Uh, uh, but if sentient beings do not exist, then who will obtain the results of developing compassion? So no sentient beings they exist. Then who going to develop compassion? Who like become get in the nirvana? Who get the the you know like liberation? Because uh, sentient beings no exist. Then you practice compassion. What are you going to get a result? So this thing is no result there, obtain the result of developing compassion. Answer. Uh, uh, so Shanti Deva say yes, this is uh, true, but it's, uh, you know, uh, the result also actually dependent on this uh, relative truth. Actually, the relative true is a delusion perception right delusion perception so when you wake up actually the delusion state didn't exist so long as you don't have a delusion then you don't have you know waking up to that because it's like this both is related to each other and we don't have a samsara then we don't have a nirvana so free from samsara and the nirvana. Why is we called nirvana? Because right now we are stuck in samsara. That's why we call nirvana. But actually, samsara is not exist. Then nirvana also not exist too. So that's why Shanti Deva say answer is although automatically it is true because uh, no one going to you know obtain the results automatically true that there are no truly existing sentient beings. There are absolutely no sentient beings exist. Uh, compassion or results is like deceptively, it's compassion practice is follow the relative truth, deceptively from the point of view of a mind confused about the phenomena. So then who has a delusional mind and then there practice compassion, then there has a they practice compassion, then they can develop compassion, that they can get a result, they can waking up. Uh, so confusion about phenomena, we accept that the existing of merely appearing result arising from merely appearing compassion develop towards merely appearing sentient beings. So me and Shanti Deva, he said, and this uh, delusionally, he not going to deny it. You know, like means like you practice, we are right now is delusion. So delusionally, you can practice compassion, you have a result. Because when your mind is confused during that time, you practice compassion. That is like we already talked this morning, positive, you know, uh, delusion practice, positive. So that helps waking up you know, is introduced to the negative delusion, causes of negative delusion. So we are deluded. During that time, you practice compassion, Shanti Deva said, there has a result. So he not uh, denying like just a temporary self, the point is a temporary self. We say, oh, I am wanted to become liberate. So Shanti Deva say yes, you delusionally you can do that, you can have that thoughts, you can practice compassion, compassion, bodhicitta is positive, that's introduced to negative self. 
Uh, so long as we are stuck in the delusion state, we need the cultivated compassion and bodhicitta because that helps become waking up. When you wake up, then no compassion, no, no bodhicitta exists in there too. Okay, so no objection. So there anyway, they who accept the self-permanent, they still against, they don't say yes. Since compassion is both a subjective state to which things appear in a self way and the mind confused about the phenomena. Surely it is equally fit to be rejected as is confusion about the self. So then this paper says, okay, so compassion also actually, you know, is, is not really true exist. So then we have to reject, you have to reject the compassion bodhicitta too, same as the self. <clears throat> because both are, you know, delusion, both are uh, confusion mind. So then they say, you deny the like selfish, same as like you have to deny the compassion bodhicitta too. Yeah, so that's the, their objection is. So answer, Shanti Deva said no. So we have a positive and a negative. Since compa uh, see, in order to completely pacify suffering, one need not and cannot reject compassion, see? So we wanted to feel from samsara, we want to feel it from suffering. We need this compassion. We cannot reject the compassion. So compassion is a positive, you know, confusion. Positive confusion helps negative confusion is removed. So Shanti Deva said, first, first we have to remove negative confusion, not positive confusion. Positive confusion we need. Therefore, one should not reject this merely apparent confusion about the results. See, this uh, compassion bodhicitta cannot reject, but the confusion about the self should be rejected because negative we have to reject it because it increases such thing as self importance, which are causes for suffering. The self create causes of suffering. We have to reject the causes of suffering. So that is a negative self, negative confusion. And uh, we have to create a positive confusion. See, it's introduced to negative confusion. Positive confusion is, so follow the cause and the effect. Practice love and the compassion, bodhicitta. Uh, so no, in, uh, so because it increases such things as self-importance, which are causes for suffering, then objection again. But there are no means to reject these confusions. So then they say, how can you do you can reject this confusion? Because no any antidote to reject and confusion. Shanti Deva said there's an antidote. Answer is they are because of the spring may remedy for it is meditation upon identitylessness. So you meditate selflessness of a person. Selflessness of a person is entered to the self. So selflessness of a person and selfish cannot be together because this is a contradict to each other. You know, the Buddhist teaching is followed by, we talk about the science, like means like researching. See, it's which is introduced to our, this negative emotion. See, this selflessness of personal meditation is introduced to the self. Self is the root cause of suffering. So that's why if you meditate love, compassion, selfish is diminished, but cannot take root you know, get rid of the root. Because they're not directly entered out. So then you need something more powerful directly entered out something, which is entered out to selfish, is selflessness of a person is entered out to the selfish. So same is the sun and the darkness. 
when sun shines, darkness is go away. So that's the reason. Other thing about is this uh, way of a Buddhist hour, we have a chapter 10. Chapter one to all the way eight is not really directly introduced to the self. Selfless self, right? But then which is really directly introduced to self is emptiness meditation. Emptiness meditation is introduced to the self. So long as you meditate emptiness, then you realize the selflessness of a person, you can realize the selflessness of phenomena. So then that practice meditation, get rid of all the, our take out the root causes of suffering. Uh, the identity the identitylessness of phenomena. So that part is all is identitylessness of self. Uh, Shanti, they were debating with uh, Samchas and the other one, you know, who talked about uh, the yesterday, the Niyayakas, Niyayakas who talked about the self is like object phenomena. Phenomena is self. So Samja says like self means consciousness, permanent consciousness. So then that meditation, you understand that section is you can realize the selflessness of a personal meditation. So now it's going to talk about the selflessness of phenomena. Close uh, placement of mindfulness on the body. So then selflessness of a phenomena have four different kinds of meditations. So this morning I share with you, right? And these four different meditations are different than uh, Telawad tradition. So Mahayana for different mindful meditation and the Telawad tradition for mind for is different. Telawad mind for 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 mindful is like more easy and simple. So it's more teaching in the Western country. Mindful means like it's mostly it's like Telawad tradition. So Mahayana for different mindfulness is harder to practice because it's a more, more deeper level. And that's the reason first we have to meditate, tell about the tradition for different level mindfulness meditation. So the, sometimes we, we do that together practice and you know, like sometimes we do the mindful body meditation and then we do mindful feeling meditation, mindful consciousness meditation, mindful phenomena meditation. We do that. That's always a Telavada tradition. It's a simple one, easy one. So the Mahayana means similar, but more going to more deeper, subtle level than that. So basic for different kind of mindfulness practice not possible to going to get Buddhahood. So basic for mindfulness practice helps us relax our mind, release thoughts, release emotions, not so strong fixation to the object. So you just understanding and permanent. So that is a good, you know, like basic things also really helpful, but Comparing to this one, other is like still gross level. And this is go more more subtle in the deeper level. Mahayana, mindful meditation is. So first here is mindfulness on the body. Uh, the body is neither feet or nor curves. So body cannot be your feet nor curves. Takes, mm, uh, ties, I think ties and the west are not the body. The stroma is easy, I think. It's, this is a, a, a abdomen or something, it's harder to say. Abdomen, right? <laughs> so the stroma and the big are not the body. Okay. Um 
Hon säger? Ja, yeah. abdomen. Abdomen, jag ser. Excellent. Abdomen. Abdomen and the back are not the body. And the neither are the chest and the shoulders are shoulders, the body. They also cannot be body. So body means usually we just chrome to feet whole together as we call body. But actually, how many body you have? Say only one. So then where is that? So cannot be this like feet or no curves so like one by one you cannot point the your body so that means your actually body is not exist no exist no exist um, just always like you know we use the same logic phenomena where is it? we call table right table where is it really called the table the legs or part of which part you cannot find the table and we call the car. Where is it called call the car? Tires or wheels or engines? Where is the call the your car? Do you take all these part particles? No car existed there. And uh, so that way, you know, that this idea is moved to everything, like all these phenomena. The right now is like follow gross level. The house, where is it that you call house? Window or drawer or, you know, it's then bed or like you take off all this part, it's no houses existed there too. So that way, you know, you investigating. So no, the ribs and the hands are not the body. And pits and the neck, nappy or neck or off the neck are not the body or inner organs are not the body. So just same as like thinking about the car and the car engine, engine is the same as the inner body, right? Or third body, then this other part is like that. We also have a similar like that too. So all this comes together, see, work very well, but something wrong is it doesn't work very well. And we are amazing, right? All this comes together, works everything together, great. But in the part of something missing that doesn't work, right? See, easily get something like see is we get sick or get something wrong easily because see there's so many function contractions that one get something wrong is it doesn't work very well. See, same as a car. So mm, that's the thing about how we are impermanent. So we are lucky right now still in this age we get here level. <laughs> it's, it's incredible, you know. So this all these functions working still. Mm. All inner organs are not the body, neither the head nor neck are the body. Therefore, what truly existing body is there among these parts. See, body is not part of anything, this part area. So then, then this, this uh, part of body, I mean, this part of body is not body. So then each this part of a body, has, each part of this, like, you know, branch has a body or not, cannot be like that too. If the body abides in all its limbs equally in all directions, cannot be, right? Otherwise, you lose finger, you lose your body. So that means like then still you have a body. So that means finger you lose and your, your body is still, I say my body is there. So your house is like window is broken, still you have a house. So that means windows you didn't call your house. Then you, without a door still you can call your house, right? Maybe without the roof, also you call house too. So anyway, still like part of missing that still you calling the your house. Same like that, we missing part of our body, still we call our body. But that means like this part of body is not body. Mm. Indeed, I could say that all the parts of the body abide in the parts of its lens. But where could be the partless, truly existing 
body itself abide. No possible. It would have to exist independent of its parts and unrelated to them. Uh, so there's a uh, independently bodies uh, no exist. So independently bodies no exist it means then body is no exist. It's emptiness. But we just delusion. We say ah my body, but actually you don't have a body. Mm. So see this part. Uh, the ahas, you know, they meditate the selflessness of person. So they they meditate this all the time. You saying this way, then they become one day is realize the selflessness of person means they don't longer attach to the fingers and arms, anything, body, part of body, because the free from the fixation and attachment. So then they didn't have, you know, attach onto the, our, their own body. So they realize the selflessness of a person. They see this all body is not self. But then we say, why is no self? Why is then no, this is not my body. Then why I'm going to get pain? Why I get suffering? That means it's a Self holding the, your body, self holding the, your body. So if mind let go, then I think it's not going to pain and the suffering. If mind is like no fixation to that object. So so that is like take long time to get that kind of you know experience realize right. So at least you might have to give up 100%, then less suffering. So that is the same, just like all thing about the family. Long as like your husband or wife have really good relationship and any like husband has problem, the same as wife problem, wife has problem, husband's problem, same as like that. But then they're not really go along together. Then they don't care each other, right? They don't suffer each other, whatever going on, the, their own problem. So that's see that's also see mind is like become fixation, the holding. And then we also same thing, like you know, parents as a kids, the parents, uh, kids, like kids is like really great, also good relation. And parents really like to kids, the kids really love parents, and then that time is kids has a problem, they're also same as the parents' problem, right? But then parents doesn't like kids that give up the mind then the kids has a problem they don't care you know they're not longer to their problem so see thank that you know like no it's like we already so strongly care about our body something wrong our body we have problem we we get hurt so these ahara meditators realize the selflessness of a person then they don't longer attach to their own body and then no fixation to their own body. So Bodhisattva skin give to body the others. So see Buddha Shakyamuni, his story, he give his body feet in the tigers. So I don't know, you went to Nepal, in the Nepal one area called uh, Tamil Lijin, means like body feet to the female tiger. And uh, long time ago, his story, like Buddha Shakyamuni, like previous lifetime. So he was born the king's son, the three boys, the three sons, king has three sons, that journey into the forest together. And then the three of them see the tiger has, the one tiger has baby. And she didn't have food, the mother didn't have food, nearly dying, the kids all dying so hunger that are dying so other two say yeah this two compassion the other two brothers says yeah this two is so bad they don't have food that they say the other say what the problem the younger one says oh these two the tigers need food then he said what do they eat they say they eat meat 
So then this two is left. The younger one also left, but he felt so bad. And then he said, I cannot live like that tiger. So two brothers, Yonist, kept going on the forest. The younger one went back to and lay, in, lay down to the tiger in front of the tiger. And she so weak and she couldn't eat him. So then he cut his body and feed to the tiger and this baby all and dead. So then, so that's it's like he has some levels uh, realization because it's a Bodhisattva path, you know, he's on the way of a Bodhisattva path. So he can do that because he has ability, right? He's not really strong attached to his body. So other ordinary people cannot do that because they have a self, very strong self. Then that's the reason you, the same is like that, you can look to many Bodhisattva story. They give their own body for others. For, you know, like, if benefit for others. So same is like, you know, right now the hospital, some people say they need organs or something, you know, people giving some of these organs, kinetics. They're also, they're also Bodhisattva, you know, they're, they're giving the body for others. But they, maybe that person who has a certain desire, attachment, it can be pain, that can be affected for that person. But Bodhisattvas, like their level of practice because of their giving body for others is not affected for them. So the, especially the who has a higher, higher like kind of realized emptiness, then they're not affected. Some Bodhisattva, they're affected too. So example also Shariputta. Shariputta, the story also he gave the eye for others. So actually Mara is appeared to Shariputta and asked the eye. So Shariputta is actually Bodhisattva and he, he is on the way of Bodhisattva practicing. So he, he want to help that person. He, the Mara is appeared to like, they say he need eye and without eye, he cannot see and you, can, you have to give me eye. So Shariputta give him eye and the person put in the, under the, on the, in the rope and he, he fit stepped there. Eye is like eyes, balls become pong, you know. Then they say, he laughed, he laughing. Then Shariputta said, why you ask my eye? He said, I wanted to only do that. So then, then he lost his Bodhisattva and he entered into the, to the, uh, you know, Hinayana, become Ahar, you know, following that direction. So that's the story says, but I don't know. Okay. So that's all stories, unbelievable stories. They're lost like that kind. Anyway, you, uh, the Buddha, he, the previous life he feed the tiger his body. So you can go to Nepal and they also have stayed this place and they have temples and the stupas there too. Not too far from Kathmandu, maybe three hours, like, you know, two, two hours something, dive, I don't know, maybe two hours, I think. Uh, okay. So, yes, yeah, so now we are, Verses 81, right? I think so. And if the entire truly existing body abide separately in each of the individual parts, such as the hands, and then, and then there would have to be as many bodies as the lower parts. So anyway, this, uh, uh, you know, body uh, not exist really, not in the hand and also any other, this part of has like this body. Mm. If there is no truly existing body outside or within, 
So then all sudden we don't have body. How could the hands and so forth have such a body at all? And the sense it is not something different from the hands and other parts. How could a separate body unrelated to its parts exist therefore? So this all easy. The body is not truly existing, but through being confused about its hands and other parts are mind that mistaking mistakes them for a truly existing body arises. So we have the body, we say I have my body means like this all confusion and mistakenly, you know, perception, confused perception. Uh, our mind that mistakes them for a truly existing body arises. But the body does not truly exist in the way it is apprehended by that mind. It is like the mind apprehending a pile of stones as a me because of their being set up in a fort similar to a means. So sometimes we see, you know, like some kind of a stone and or some object, you think is that it's a person, but actually no person is there. So that is a mystic conception like that. Sometimes you see colorful strings on the road, see you think it's a snake, but it's also like, you know, confuse your mind. You know, this eye is not see clearly, that's why you get confusion. So like that kind of, we, our mind is like confusion. That's why we think it exists. I and the self is exist, but actually I and the self is not exist. Then also, body is also not exist. In the same way that a pile of stones will appear to be a mind, uh, appear to be a me, for as long as the casual conditions to mistake them as a me are established, uh, example it, example it, so where the hands and so forth appear as truly existing body for as long as the casual conditions to mistake them for a body are present. So then the main point is all these condition comes together. Then we see that we say this is my body. Uh, so then this all like hand and so forth appear truly existing. So body for as long as the casual condition to mistake in there for a body are present. So all this hand, the part of a body comes together, then we say it's my body. It's all actually mistaken. Uh, just as the body as a whole is not truly existing. How can the hands be truly existing? Then so also you analyze like we say hang, this hang as means like all these fingers. And then take out this part of like particles, sections, then you cannot see the hang too. Mm, they are only composed of fingers, see? The fingers too are not truly existing because they are collection of joints. So finger also many collection joints together. And the joints in turn, the being divided into the parts are also found to be not truly existing. So then go to the finger, each finger, so all is joints. Then you look to each joint, so many part, particles. So nothing is truly existing, even one finger there. So then they go to more subtle level. So now it's going, this logic is go more, more subtle, subtle. So first we talk about this body is not exist. Now it's going to say hand is not exist. Then go to the finger is see, not exist. So then go to part of particles is not exist. Mm. Likewise, when these parts are divided into atomic particles and the atomic particles into the direction, directional parts. So this uh, part of particle also you divided directions. Uh, so they are revealed uh, as multiples and thus cannot be truly existing. 
units. See, there cannot be exist any permanent uh, unit. Uh, so then, even when the directional parts are divided up, they are found to be devoid of truly existing parts. So you cannot find any truly existing part. Hence, they are found to be as empty, then as space. Finally, all these part particles into the empty same as space because nothing is inherently subtle level part of particles too. Thus, although the body appears to be truly existing, in fact, it is not. So we think our body is truly existing, but actually not because its body is see, all this part of particles. So part of particle also no exist. It's always go to emptiness. So the main point is like not talking about, we don't have a delusion of this body. We have this delusion body. But Shanti Deva said truly body is no exist. Delusion body, yes. Relatively delusion body exist. But the delusion body is like permanent, he said no permanent. Because if he, permanent means you use logic, investigate, analytically have to find something permanent. But do you use this analytically, cannot find anything permanent and part of particles or it's become dissolved to the space. Nothing is existed there. Uh, so no, therefore who having analyzed it would be attached to this dream like form. So that is the say, ahas, that are attached to the body because they recognize this body is the same as a dream body, you know, delusion to this dream like form. And when in this way, the body is not truly existent. So in this way, body is not truly exist. How can the distinction be made into truly existing male and female bodies? So then we don't have like male and female distinctions because the first body is not exist. Then how can say female and male? Bearing woman didn't born the child, then you how you can say like, oh, bearing woman's child is girl or boy, you know. First need child, then you say boy or girl, but bearing woman never born child. Then the child you say, oh, it's boy and the girl is 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 useless, right? Incorrect. So like that. True, absolute, truly, this all is not exist. But relatively delusionally, we, we say, yes, it's, it's okay. Shanti Deva, no against right now what you're hearing song. He no against what you see in form. He said, say, you cannot see the song. You cannot hear the song. You know, you cannot think. He never against that. But he talking about the truly, reality, these things no exist. But then what we have this, he said, oh, it's, this is a delusion for us. So now what we have to do, we have to wake up. So we have to wake up, what do we have to do? We have to use this positive confusion. What is positive confusion? Create, follow the cause and the effect, right? And then meditate the love, compassion, bodhicitta. So that helps and, you know, waking up. Positive confusion helps remove the negative confusion. And then, of course, like you use this wisdom. So wisdom arise, then all this negative delusion, confusion is go away. This all negative confusion is based on the self, selfish self. So meditate selflessness of a person is directly antidote to the self. Meditate selflessness of phenomena is introduced to fixation to all this world. You know, we're seeing everything is exist permanent. So you meditate selflessness of a 
phenomena, then you are no longer attached to all this phenomena object. So then your mind is free from attachment and then free from suffering. So that's the teaching. Okay, so we finished that today, right? Okay. So now my job is done, your job, you can discussion. Um, Kempo, can I ask you something? Mm. So, you know, part of why we feel like we have separate bodies is because our nervous system gives us, you know, input from the world. You know, we feel things on our, in our body. Um, so is it true to think that we have our body just from karma? Like if we had had um, more realization, we would have a different body and a different perception? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I think if you get realized in this life, during the life, you have, you have this body, but no longer attached to this, your body. And when your body has like any problems, pains, like sex, whatever going on that never you get suffering, never, not get affected your mind. Yeah, but still you have a body, but the, you realize the selflessness of a person, then you don't get suffering. So no, we, we don't have that realization, then, you know, it's, we get suffering. Suffering is even, even you, someone not, if not in the affected body, but like you hear something, harsh words or something like unpleasant words, see, you, you can hurt, you get suffering. So, so the reason is because it's always like it's self. Okay. Kempo. So what's exactly the difference between emptiness and interconnection? Because emptiness is basically saying, if I'm understanding correctly and I could be wrong, that nothing exists on its own. It always has some other causes, conditions, factors, influences. But that is what interconnectedness is too, right? Yeah, relatively, yeah, interconnection, yes. But absolutely, interconnection also no exist too. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that's relatively see interconnection. We talk about all this conduction create us is relatively where it come from. That means you really understand where we are come from relatively. Okay. Yeah, absolute true is means like then no birth, no death. Just is. Just is, yes. Okay, thank you. Except whatever there. <laughs> we don't know. Don't fight with it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, what do you think about the, the yesterday's teaching, the, um, the idea that there wasn't six consciousnesses, you know, there aren't the six separate sense consciousness, there's just one and it perceives and focuses on different things at one time. Um, is there any truth to that? Like, uh, I really feel confused about the idea of the consciousness of like sight or the consciousness of hearing or the consciousness of taste or smell or whatever. Like, it seems like it's just the brain function. Like, is it really a consciousness there as well? Yes, of course, a consciousness. Otherwise, like brain, dead people has a brain, right? but it's not functioning. <laughs> okay, so the, like, is there separate consciousness or just one consciousness? Uh, actually, me is like, yeah, principle one consciousness, yes. 
but that is not permanent like what the other says like inherently exist permanent right so, right mm -hmm. so that's the reason like we this we walk this like the five senses like you the six five consciousness or six consciousness can hold like this you know apprehended like with uh, this object senses because the reason is like consciousness is not permanent inherent it exists okay. so that that's it the some just problem is the permanent exist mm -hmm. that's the problem that's why you know you, you have to hear all the time song or you have to hear all the time seeing the song form with your it has to be the same sound yeah right because because you could make an argument that in the relative sense there is sound at all time yes okay but it has to be the same perception of the same sound no change yeah no change all the time There's all the my amiga teaching just different teachings about all you saying different logic but mean point is all same just approving the emptiness that means like just uh, see buddha's teaching is only for focus for liberation so no any other than that uh, so think about to see all this teaching is talk about the like, happiness like where it come from really the first we other chapters like you know the happiness like temporary happiness come from right and then that take you to actually this relative happiness take you to the absolute truth so if you don't get like human beings body so other lower realms not possible to and attain the enlightenment right so that's the reason we have to practice all this moral conduct first the teaching this all is taking up and then the go to like buddha hold means you have to really fully realize emptiness otherwise it cannot be there so just main point is sharing everything is uh, reality and the liberation Well, I mean, on the earth plane, you can see all the things we need for survival. You can see how we're not independent pretty easily, right? I mean, we need food, we need water, we need uh, drops from our parents to even come into existence. But how, what is the argument for how we, what are we dependent on in the bardo for our existence? Bardo, what do you mean? So there we are in the bardo. It's just consciousness in the bardo. Mm. What are the parts? How is it that we're not self-existing, inherently existing in the bardo? The the consciousness, as I said, is uh, actually this uh, very strong coming imprints, delusion coming imprints. So that's the reason you have this bardo, right? If you don't have this uh, strong confusion, you know, karmic imprints in the pardo, then you don't have to go to pardo, yeah? So now also we have a pardo, see, this is a pardo, right? Living pardo. So because we stuck in the living pardo, the reason is like we have already so strong karmic imprints, it's so strong and then everything is rare for us. So not easy to let go that even teachings like say yes yes accept but you really don't still go into your mind because it's yeah 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 right if we don't really accept until realize yeah okay yeah so the things that appear in the bardo like um there's the eight pisachi there's a stage where the you know the sense objects appear in the bardo as the animal headed deities yes Okay, so what does that mean? Is that because of, of imprints? Is that what you're saying? So that is like, see, actually, uh, if you really know like, this Vajrayana teaching, it's, it's because due to this in emptiness, right? 
the, the Buddha means it's a realization of emptiness. So if you really understand the, the Vajrayana teaching, then samsara is within your own, nirvana also all in within your own with you. So the it's it's hard to explain because it's our we have delusion this state. Long as you free from that state, it's it's different. So there says here has a, the two brains, right? Left brain, right brain, yes. So left brain is like a, uh, more this, uh, I think left brain is like this samsara, right? Right brain is like nirvana. Do you know that or no? Yes. So see, this left brain is right brain. See, this is like, that's why it's like everything's come from own. Um. Means like when you realize and uh, you go to nirvana, it's like shut down the left brain. So then you have totally different own experience. And you stuck in samsara during that time is right brain is actually almost shut down. You know, they don't have much power. Mostly is left brain is working for samsara delusions. So you that way, you know, like scientists maybe say that, and that is exactly what Jayana teaching. Everything's our own experience. Or is our own experience. Yadam Dedi is our own experience. Samsara is our own experience. Nirvana is our own experience. Pardo is our own experience. So you realize that is a Yadam Dedi. If you don't recognize, it's become like the see. Like if you realize this data is right brain, it's nirvana. If you don't recognize data is in the left brain and when you get in the pardo, this all the pardo who going to torture for the pardo beings, that is also the its own experience. They call yamas. Yama also appear to our own mind. If you realize that yama is Buddha, data, then that means like actually all this is a functioning is your within on you. It's all is your mandala. Hold mm -hmm. your mandala as this power. So this uh, kind of, you know, like more this science, like talk about the brain and understand is like what Jayana teaching. Actually, one of the most effective therapies for people with mental health problems in their thinking and their emotions was designed by um, a Zen master who is a psychologist. So they actually use Buddhist science and it has been found to be the most effective, especially mm -hmm. for people that are suicidal. So the problem is, uh this you know this buddhist teaching we really cannot like so hard to explain for other actually there is all is like there but the some reasons we cannot explain easily and the second is like people don't really understanding that so need something waking up you know and then the channels like the everything is like their function and going on there samsara and the nirvana That's the see the the actually all this uh, in the you know saying that your question is like whatever this some forms appear to us means like it's in this the uh, Vajrayana teaching the that is it's all is like inside in the brain so that is appear to form body Long as you recognize that's own Yadam data, is you don't recognize that it's become yamas. This is everything's our own manifestation. Thank you, 
today today you said like empty uh the chittamatran said you know everything was mind and and everything isn't mind according to madhyamaka everything is emptiness right yes but it's just a little bit hard. i don't quite i get mixed up right there because everything's a manifestation from our own what not mind our own it's our own mandala a manifestation from our own mm. what <laughs> somehow it's it's mind and emptiness or something i don't i'm not clear on that distinction okay so i understand uh that's uh so hard to explain like see chitta matter permanent except right mind's permanent my yamika except mind but they don't accept permanent so then mind is emptiness right it's no nothingness but it's emptiness okay so then that's the reason you know this can project the mind can project everything that means like all is come from emptiness mind is emptiness so then all is come from emptiness means make sense or no yeah bit by bit it's very helpful thank you the emptiness also said that's then this all the like appearances arising that also emptiness because no permanent there it's emptiness that is arising the form bodies so main point is like see is something permanent then the nothing can arise anything our mind cannot be our own projecting anything cannot be our own manifestation because it's a permanent if no permanent everything emptiness that's why we have our own manifestation so in the bardo then is it not so much that there are causes and conditions but it's just that things are still not permanent which makes your bardo being not a permanent self it's just that you're not a self in the bardo because you're not permanent there are these changing appearances bardo beings means the sender that they didn't yet waking up they have a delusion self that's why they're suffering right in the bardo so that's a kind of count in the this realization emptiness yeah if who has a realization emptiness they're not going in the bardo they don't have a bardo Pardo is like same as us who has a delusion, this conception. Yeah, you just think about it, right? You just like saying that you have these two things going on together. One is like emptiness realization and one is like delusion conception. The both in the pardo is cannot be because realization emptiness not in the pardo. Pardo beings has self, yes. It's a delusion self. The no permanent self. If the permanent self, then always they're stuck in the pardo. That they cannot change. Then our cannot change. They're stuck just post in the pardo. Like you know what they have suffering. They all the time they're suffering, twenty four hours. That means like they don't have permanent self, but delusion self they has. That's why they all experience suffering. So now you realize this, and then we don't go to the pardo, right? Because we know there always no exist there. Yeah. How do you get to know it in your bones, in your empty bones? What means empty bones? I mean, you know, it seems like I heard the teaching and it's here on the surface, but if I was to die right now, would I really know it? Like, would I really know it? Would I be able to say, ah, it's all emptiness and reach enlightenment? How do I get it like deeply inside a realization, deep realization? 
So that's the, you see, we have to practice like all these different levels, right? So Shanti Deva said, he said today, see, love, compassion, he didn't deny that. That's he said, yes, need, because it's for delusionals. So we are delusional, so we need that practice, right? Then, of course, this selflessness of a person, selflessness of phenomena, meditation we need. So then we have to meditate this four different kinds of mind for meditation, not only just basic mind for meditation. It's go more deeper level mind for meditations. So then before we die, we have our own experience, this practice meditation, then Pardo, just you can say this is not true. But until that, we say not true, but actually it's true anyway. <laughs> because uh, intellectually you say not true, but reality you don't have a realization that, right? We don't have conviction that. Okay, so now everyone get I think. No, I'm 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 still struggling a little bit. I, I, from yesterday, I, went, I I contemplated on on the aggregates and the in the bardo and so forth, and I said, you know, that really doesn't make sense because it's all it's all dependently arisen. So so why even focus on that? So now I'm beginning to think focus everything. Huh? Focus for which one you mean? The aggregates and the bardo, and and uh, and then I realize it's all dependent origination, so it's really not important. I mean, it's not useful information. Everything is conditioned phenomena, right? Yes. Okay, so now, so I'm sort of gaining an understanding of 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 that. But now I'm beginning to wonder what what is we keep saying that that emptiness is not nothingness, but what is something out of the nothingness? What what is an example of something that's not nothingness? So example we told a lot, you know, no birth, no death. So this Things like never exist, then how can no exist? No exist. So that's that, emptiness? That, that idea is hard to get, you know, because if you don't understand that idea, it's really hard to understand my Yamika view. So this emptiness means like I'm beginning last time, nothing is exist. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So then, I'm uh, beginning last time, nothing existed. Then, so how are you going to say, like, no exist? No exist means, like, dependent exist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, now compassion, does that, does that arise out of emptiness? No, so this is all relatively like, see, the, it's a delusion that we talk about compassion, bodhicitta, but it's Shantideva already said here today. So we need that, that is a positive delusion. Right, so it's still delusion, all right. Yeah. So all we right, thank you. positive delusion, otherwise we cannot wake up. Mm. Okay, thank you. You want the dedication? Yes. Kambula, I have a different question. May I ask? Yes. So if a Madamika school is white, and then the other school, Chantika or uh, Chita, uh, 
Mika and all these other schools is a problem. So I just wonder, if I am a follower, I am a practitioner in a Chitamitra school or the Chantika school or other school, is, does that mean I will not attain enlightenment because I follow the school which have some uh, interested for here because they believe permanent? Let me, sorry, but I didn't hear the first part. It's, so, okay, if, if I am a follower, a practitioner in a Chita Mitra, Mitra school, so I believe in my school teaching as the, the mind exists, the mind is permanent. So, but I as a yogi, I practice, follow the Chita Mitra, uh, Mitra school to practice. Does that mean I will not realize? Does that mean that because my school has the fundamental thought about believing of the permanency of the mind, so I will not be totally liberated? Does that mean if I am a yogi in that school? Yes, uh, your Chitta Matarin actually there's many different kinds. Uh, I mean, it's uh, the, you know, Chitta Matarin. Uh, follow the it's it's hard to you know like if you don't study this philosophy things and uh, just we talk about the chitta muttering but some days like you get chitta muttering view and then you easily understand the mayamika view because you already have good level realization and uh, you don't start the chitta muttering view and the permanent mind uh, so I, I my main point is is it this belief of philosophy will upset our enlightenment. Oh. So if that means only uh, uh, Madamika school people, uh, the practitioner in Madamika school is fully realized and all other school people, are, uh, the practitioner, they do not truly realize. Is yes. it possible? Yes, yes, yes. But other schools like, you know, Buddha giving the, his compassion, you know, he giving different levels for individual. Uh -huh. so if first you talk about the Maya Minka teaching and then people, some don't have that capacity and they lost their courage to do. And that's why like they have example, you know, in the, in the auction and then have a couple of islands so you can rest in the island and then you keep, can keep going again. So like that, this other view is like you can rest there and then you can keep going again. That sounds very much like a Lotus, uh, Lotus uh, Siddhartha uh, Pandarika uh, Sutra was talking about the three yana. The first yana was a uh, uh, the small vehicle, the small vehicle, when the Araha realized enlightenment, then this is just, uh, uh, this enlightenment is a, a, a refugee place, but eventually you have to go to the Mahayana, you have to go to the Buddha. Yes, yes. That sounds almost like that. Yes. So, so other school, other than Madamika, from the Santi. They are cons of will that other than Madamika, all other people's realization is just staying in some stage, if not fully enlightenment. Exactly. Yes, true? yes, yes. Okay. Okay, that's from something they were strong of will. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Okay, Ma Marilyn, can you share the note? EDG, can you do the prayer, EDG? Can you hear EDG? Ed, you're muted. <laughs> Let 
<laughs> Ed, you're still muted. We can't hear anything. <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I think he knows he's saying like, no, like he cannot do it. Okay, then, uh, Gail Percy, can you do the prayer? Can you read or no? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, Imaho, in the center is the marvelous Buddha Amitabha of boundless, like I've got to take his thumbnails off, of boundless light. On the right side is the Lord of great compassion, and on the left is Vajrapani, the Lord of powerful means. All are surrounded by limitless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Measured with peace and happiness is the blissful pure land of Devachan. When I and all beings pass from samsara, may we be born there without taking samsara free birth. May I have the blessing of meeting Amitabha face to face by the power of the blessings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the 10 directions May we attain this aspiration without hindrance. Teyata pensata driya awa bodhanaya soha. Bodhicitta, the excellent and precious mind, where it is unborn, may it arise. Where it is born, may it not decline, but ever increase higher and higher. By this virtue, may I achieve omniscience by defeating all enemies' confusion. May all who travel on the waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death cross the ocean of samsara. As Manjushri the water realized the ultimate state, and as did Samantabhadra, I will follow in their path and fully dedicate all the merit for all sentient beings. May the teachings of the great Drinkumpa Ratnashri, who is omniscient Lord of the Dharma, master of interdependence, continue and increase through study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until the end of samsara. Thank you. I did figure it out. It took me too long. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I, it's okay. Next time. I couldn't, I couldn't find the mute button. I lost the screen. I kept looking all over the place. I, it's happened before. I don't know what the technique is. So anyway, sorry about that. No problem. I, I really That's wanted to do it. I just couldn't, couldn't do it. Mm. Are, we, are we doing Kuntus Campos prayers tomorrow? Okay. What is tomorrow, actually? Great idea. Yeah, tomorrow. Dolstin. Ah. Dolstin. Really? Sandy, what's tomorrow? The solstice. Right? The solstice. The solstice. 21st. Solstice means, what is a solstice means? Like the, 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 the size of the day. shortest day? Yes. Longest yeah. day, the longest night of the day, of the year. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's tomorrow, are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Oh. It's a big oh. one too. It's important. It's... And those stars, you know, the planets are lining up tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. Um, Jupiter and Saturn. It's Aquarius, actually. I read that somewhere. It's <clears throat> Aquarius. Let's hope. It's the, yeah. the conjunction of Ju Jupiter and Saturn. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you can see, Kempo, if you've got clear sky. It, yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be the brightest it's been in 200 years. The conjunction of these two planets, uh, no, 800 years. They're so close together that they what make is, a giant there? star. Sorry? What, what I can see tomorrow? They, they call it the uh, Bethlehem star or the Christmas star. It was actually the star that was seen in Bethlehem over this town of Bethlehem when Jesus was born. Uh, but that's the two planets coming together tonight. I'm sure you can see it tonight too. They're just going to be yeah. more close tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. For several days. Tomorrow is the the uh, the real the part partial con conjunction, but it's it's it, you can see it today if there's a clear sky. I see. It's in the southwest sky, and it goes down about eight thirty or so. So you have to go out right after the sun goes down. Um, no. And they may look th like they're overlapping. They may be slightly distinct, but it's very <laughs> unusual. Yeah. Thank you, Curtis. It's Saturn yeah. and Jupiter, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Jupiter yeah. is the brighter of the two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Can we see it here in, the, in our areas? <clears throat> yeah. Are you on the planet Earth? 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you need clear skies. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure after today. Was... <laughs> it's very low on the horizon, so you have to be in a place where you can see it close to the horizon because it's kind of low. Okay. It's yeah. in the southwest. It goes. To, it sets about 8:30 or so. So it's only uh, partly up in the sky at dusk. Yeah. It'll be gone at 8:30 because it goes. It sets yeah. just like the sun. Um, I see. Thank you. Yeah. It'll, that'll be three thirty. We've already had set for a long time in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> it was like three thirty the other night, and it was dark. I was like, oh, jeez. <laughs> So what time are we coming back tomorrow? Seven again or what? Uh, to, to, to sample Eleven prayer. in the morning. Seven, I think. Uh, eleven. Our uh, our normal daily practice time in eleven a uh, EST, but yeah, seven p.m. right for the Kunta Zampas. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank wow. you. And we're doing different languages, right? And yeah. maybe Amanda, you could send uh, Marilyn and I the link to that uh, I, translation. I, I've got it on my email already. Oh, you do? Okay. You have you have Portuguese too, Marilyn? I just put the link to the Loatza house on my email. So it was. Um, I don't think we found it on Lotsawa House. It oh, was just, it was just. I'll I'll send it to you. I'll okay. Send it. Okay. Yeah, I, I had in Lotsawa, there was the aspiration of Samantha Badra, but that's not the same uh, prayer. So I, I had to look it up in some other place for the Kuntu oh, Sampo. I found a Kuntu Mangpo, but it, I didn't see, like I, there was Tibetan, English, German. Yeah, there, there's no, uh, there, there is not Spanish or, yeah. No, I, I thought that's what we were talking about. I can change it on mine then, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Haven't sent it yet. I, I have mean, any you too. Have them, Amanda, right? So, sorry, say that again. You you have them? The 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 you could you find the one I, I sent you? Could you Oh uh, yes, yeah, it was yeah, it was great. Yeah, yep. I'll just forward that on to, to Debbie and Marilyn. Thank <clears> you so much. I looked and looked and couldn't find anything, so I'm glad you did. So Lily, can you do the Chinese tomorrow? We have a Chinese. Sorry, what's what's about it? I'm kind of confused. What it, what Chinese? <laughs> Could you say it again? What you are yeah, going to tomorrow? Do? Tomorrow we're going to do the kind of Zambo prayer. It's Samantha Bada prayer. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I have the Chinese version. Yes. Everyone oh, going great. to do different regions, so you can do the Chinese. Okay, it's a seven o'clock. You said in the morning. Oh, Even yeah. seven o'clock. Eastern. Eastern, seven o'clock in the morning. Night. 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 Going to... Night. In the Night. evening. In the evening. I'm sorry. Oh, in the evening. Okay, okay. In the evening. Okay. Yeah. Even better. <laughs> okay. I will, I will change the Chinese. Yeah, no problem. I'm, yeah. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Wonderful. Bye. See you tomorrow. <laughs> right. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.